are we? Hide away, hide away. We're heading off to Top Farm to go, uh, hopefully go fly with sleep, fly away. We come to Top Farm, where see Tim Hardy, the UK distributor of the Sling series of aircraft. This is the Sling HW uh, high wing. No surprises there. Powered by a 915IS a turbocharged Rotax that delivers 141 horsepower, 135 continuous power if you want to fly it that fast. Um, coming down here, you can see this particular airplane. First saw this in Oshkosh, so it flew from South Africa to Oshkosh to Europe. Looks like they popped down to Rome, not quite sure what they were. Oh, where did they go? They went to Greece, didn't they? Not sure what they were doing there. Came back to the UK, which is where it is now. And then uh, once we finish with it and a few other people, I guess, it's going to head back to the USA. Um, lovely, lovely. Yeah, not head back to the USA, head back to South Africa, even. Um, Inside, lovely leather interior, two seats at the back, and a whole ton of luggage space, plus really nice Garmin G3X avionics. Way to go. Good, 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 good. Um, the fuselage still is actually a composite um, thing. So the wings are aluminium. Talking about the wings, funnily enough, I nearly forgot each leading edge is a fuel tank. You've got 99 litres per side. So what's that, 198 litres? I think just two per side are unusable. So well, that's a whole bunch, I can't really do the sums. 194 litres should be enough to get you going. A couple of big kind of flaps. We'll talk about flaps on the other side. And then the tail cone and empennage is uh, aluminium, riveted aluminium, fairly traditional stuff. And looking at it, that's a fairly big, chunky tail. I'm going to guess that there's no problem with tail authority there, um, which is good. What else have we got here? This is the baggage door. Let's have a quick look here. So, oh, there's quite a load of baggage in here, plus I believe the seats fold flat so you could sleep in it if you really have to, but I mean, who's, who's going to want to sleep in an airplane like this? I mean, not me, but then I'm much more into hotels. Um, plane flaps, nice big chunky plane flaps, little aidons. This was a bit of a surprise to me. Like two, of, two of these lights each side, I mean, gee, it must be really dark in South Africa. Um, Undercarriage, this looks pretty chunky, doesn't it? Um, this one's obviously a tri-gear, but and that's not even a fairing. Jeez. Um, available tail dragger as well. So there you go. Let's go fly, see what it's really like. So just looking along at the moment, we've got 83% power. And it's kind of modulating just around 120 knots. And there's a fuel flow somewhere around here. 31.5. Let's just come back a little bit. Yeah, so 28 litres an hour, increased 2,000 feet from going 116, 115 knots. You shall be at all. So, I'm just going to gently approach the store, see what happens here. Okay. Power back. Bank of attack indicator. Got a store warning at 60. D3. Doesn't really want to do it. No, it doesn't, does it? Should be 58. Quite benign. I was a bit worried about, I thought I might be bending the stick then. You're right. Top line traffic, uh, it's a whiskey. Visual with you, we're joining overhead, and it's down with right hand, 06. Top line traffic, uh, it's a whiskey, right base, 06. Um, Tim, this is going through the LAA 
process at the moment, is that right? It is, yeah. We uh, visited the LAA last week and um, they've been presented now with all the documentation they need to uh, initially um, give build approval and then lastly when the first of type is completed we can then do the flight tests. But informally, um, you know, the, the airplane flies extremely well it and we have every uh, expectation that it will pass that with flying colours. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, compared to a, quite a few airplanes I've flown, this is a kind of pretty much vice. There was not a huge amount happening at the stall at all. It was, no. it was very stable. Um, coped with my. Uh, you probably didn't notice that I was handling it badly on purpose just to see what it was like. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Yeah, right. that's what it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, pr pretty, pretty stable, pretty good. Um, no, no issues with it at all from that point of view, from just a couple of quick flights. One of which we, we, we took cameraman Ed, put him in the back. Um, so I think that was that was good. Um, okay, so I guess, you know, as soon as it's not fully in the UK yet, we don't know how, how long is it going to take someone to build. Yeah. Um, but I think I think there's a guy at the Candorist who's sort of flying around the world. He kind of built one in, in three months or something yeah. in, in South Africa. Yeah. That was at the factory, so he may or may not have had a, a helping hand, I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, looks like a very good, high quality kit to me, and certainly having a look around the hangar, the other aircraft in there, they all look amazing. Big question how much is it going to cost a four seat aeroplane? You know, equipped like this. You know, not, I'm not talking about the stripped out Ben Hur's chariot version, but sure. kind of like a normal one. So we think the outturn cost will be something like £190,000 all in, so that's including VAT and shipping and all the kits you need to finish the aeroplane. Okay. Um, engine of course, avionics, um, a decent avionics fit, yeah. not necessarily with the GTN 750 that you see in here, yeah. but with a, a sensible arrangement that will enable you to go for night IFR. Now, my, my top tip, and it's just a personal preference, if you're going to take this aeroplane, you're going to go touring in it, and you're going to go touring far and wide, get yourself a GTN 750 and get yourself the Garmin GFC 500 Autopilot, or whatever that's called in the non-certified world. That will make life significantly easier. And the G3X is just a great piece of equipment. And I think this comes pretty much already for those kind of, yes, for, for does. the Garmin equipment, does. doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and that, that, makes a, that makes a huge difference. It, it's, not, it's not the cheapest way to do everything, but, um, you know, when you're still flying this around in 10 years' time, you're going to have appreciated that, particularly Absolutely. on the longer legs. It's just yeah. a really, really good system. Um, I don't suppose you know the answer to this, but how long do you think it is before the LAA might go? Yes! The man from Tour Western, he said yes. <laughs> um, it's difficult to say. They have their various processes to go to, um, but obviously we, we essentially have agreed with the LAA that um, the build approval will be in place before the first rivers is pulled. Well, I wish you every success with it. Thank and, you very much. Uh, I'll be in touch with some more questions, no doubt. Very you good. can read Thank all you very about much. it in, in, on flyer.co.uk coming up soon. So, uh, so obviously, if you, if you like what we're doing, if you like this video, um, join us for the Flyer live stream, all that kind of stuff. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe um, to what we're doing because um, we do it because we know you love it. So, um, thanks for watching. Absolutely. If you'd like to support us, go to www.flyer.co.uk and join the Flyer Club. A um, couple of levels of membership, there'll be one that suits you. So, that would be great. Thank you. Absolutely. Fly safe, everyone. Bye. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.